Hello there. I'm Alex. This is Josh. We are the target audience where content is made for absolutely everybody, but we think it's specifically made for us and hopefully for you as well. Today is number 19, episode 19 of Star Trek, the original series, Gene Roddenberry's Baby. <laughs> Today we have Tomorrow is Yesterday. But before we get there, I just want to touch up a little bit on last week's arena, possibly my favorite episode of Star Trek of all time, which means that it's only downhill from here, but hopefully not. But uh, a lot of wonderful comments from last week. Uh, one in particular talking about a parsec is an actual unit of measurement in uh, astronomical space, which is interesting. And Star Wars fucked it up and had the retcon it in Solo. Solo is underrated, by the way. Never seen Solo. But um, I will say, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the response to the last video was awesome. I knew going into it, we had gotten some comments that it was some people's favorite episodes. And that was confirmed after we posted a bunch of comments coming in of people saying exactly that. One of their favorite episodes or favorite episode of the first season, favorite episode of all time, you know, all those kinds of things. So I'm glad that everyone enjoyed it. And I also um, just really like to see all the people talking about what we were talking about in terms of other material being inspired by Star Trek, specifically from that episode. And people having discussions about that in the comments was really awesome to read through. We do read all of the comments so appreciate that and yeah it was one of my favorite episodes as well as i said and even after letting you know sitting on it for a few days and doing the edit and rewatching and stuff like it it's it's a contender it might be my favorite as well and then going into this week a lot of people have also said a lot of these upcoming episodes are really good and this one specifically tomorrow is yesterday i think i remember people talking about in our comments of uh, one of the very first episodes saying that there's some like loose connections to this one. So uh, I'm excited to see if we'll notice anything while we're watching it because, you know, the connections between episodes are always so rare. Um, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, when we see Harry Mudd, that'll be, you know, that'll, that'll tie everything together. I hope this is it. He's going to get us to 2K. And speaking of 2K. Yeah. So as a lot of you know, one of the last videos we just did here on the channel was our very first subscriber special reaction. We reacted to the movie Forbidden Planet from 1956, and that was in celebration of hitting 500 subscribers. And we've grown a lot since then, and that's awesome. And our next subscriber special, we've decided, is going to be when we hit 2,000 subscribers. Uh, and I know you're probably thinking, I'm already subscribed to the channel, like what else can I do? But truly, seriously, Liking the video and giving a thumbs up does a huge boost to as far as pushing it out in the algorithm to other Star Trek fans. That is the best thing you can do. Comments are awesome. Watching the whole video, of course, is awesome. But liking the video for whatever reason, that's what really drives YouTube to show it to other people. So please do that. And as soon as we hit that 2,000 subscribers, we'll post a new poll of what movies you guys can decide for us to react to. So leave those in the comments as well so we can start getting that list together and bring another uh, movie film reaction to you guys. I'm really excited for for that u.s air force aircraft of some sort by the size of it and the speed are they gonna see the enterprise it doesn't even read like anything i've ever seen oh it is and they're gonna think they're aliens and this has got to be like the <laughs> first footage from our earth in this show i think <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty low altitude there yeah, it's really low. That's awesome. This should be interesting. It required all warp power in reverse to pull us away from the star. To stop here, wherever we are. Everything is out, sir. We are on impulse power only. This definitely looks like the set when there's no effects or, or anything on. Like, just the set of the yeah, ship. Yeah, it's, it's very dark. Oh no, Ahura's not in their chair. Is still with <laughs> as soon as she sat down, all the lights came on. <laughs> that makes me wonder if they go down to regular uh, now time Earth, would they even recognize it? Pro I mean, I would assume not. This is the 5:30 news summary. Cape Kennedy. The first manned moonshot is scheduled for Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's good timing. That was in the late 1960s. Apparently, Captain. So are we. <laughs> I'm like, come on, just talk to him. Just try to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, if they can, if they can read in the radio frequency, the Enterprise can probably send something back. Johnny, activate tractor beam. Lock onto that aircraft and hold it out there. <laughs> just disintegrates him. <laughs> oh, they're gonna bring him up. Oh man, imagine you're on Earth, like your pilot just gets freaking abducted. <laughs> the first man abducted by aliens was actually abducted by humans from the future. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Welcome aboard the Enterprise. Uh, dramatic lighting. It's been gone for a while. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. I hope they don't do something stupid like, who are you? Oh, I'm, you know, Bill Kirk. <laughs> Bill Kirk. My great, great, great grandfather's. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Oh, come on, that's the first thing. He just gets distracted by a woman. Woman in space? <laughs> huh? I never have believed in little green men. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> nice. Feel free to look around, Captain. Don't touch anything, but I think you'll find it interesting. Interesting is a word and a half for it, Captain. We cannot return him to Earth, Captain. He already knows too much about us and is learning more. Such a man could manipulate key industries, stocks, and even nations. Ooh, this is a rough choice. You know, if that was a sphere, just like return him now. Before he knows anything. Just knock him out. They don't have the uh, men in black flashing, memory flashing light. <laughs> I was literally just thinking that. Ah, oh, they got him a nice sweater. How about that? Here, throw this on. <laughs> you work here now. You know what the future looks like. If anybody else finds out, they could change the course of it. Destroy it. Well, then my disappearance would change something, too. Oh, gotcha. I have run a computer check on all historical tapes. They show no record of any irrelevant contribution by John Christopher. Oh, Damn! Oh, oh, oh. We can't take the risk. I don't want to know about risks. I have a wife, two children. What about them? Oh, I was afraid that was going to come up. I'm sorry. Maybe I can't go home, but neither can you. Ooh. You're as much a prisoner in time as I am. Can't describe this episode as slow-paced. No, it's uh, high stakes, interesting. <laughs> oh, no! Now, I'm going to step into that thing and you're going to transport me back to Earth. Oh, oh! Oh! <laughs> I like how they totally faked this out. Like, oh, it's going to be a hide-and-seek. Nope. <laughs> right away. <laughs> Kirk's there. He could be retrained, re-educated. Now you're sounding like Spock. If you're gonna get nasty, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I find that we must return Captain Christopher to Earth, after all. Why? Uh, he's gonna be a relative. That your son, Colonel Sean Jeffrey Christopher, or Will Head, the first successful Earth Saturn probe. I was half right. Unless we return Captain Christopher to Earth. There will be no Colonel Sean Jeffrey Christopher to go to Saturn. I'm going to have a son. Uh, yeah, I don't want to poke too many holes in it. It's time travel. Whatever. I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, that whole thing reminded me of that About Time movie that we really like. Where, uh, like, yeah. what if while he's gone, he was supposed to, you know, conceive. And because he conceived at a different time, different, different kid. kid. Yep. I'll just go out on a limb and say no time travel in any media makes sense ever. So there's no point in talking about whether or not it makes sense. <laughs> and we still haven't worked out how they're going to get back. It's like there's so much going on that them getting back to their time is like on the back burner. Because <laughs> there's just so much happening. Yeah, I feel like they'll just write that off at the end really quick. Like, oh, the star put us back. Yeah, Sulu. I figured it out, Captain. Or Scotty. Oh, I just had to press this button here. <laughs> on earth this reminds me of uh end game with steve and uh tony, tony yeah inf infiltrating the base was that stolen as well <laughs> i like how they're playing this off like oh this is so cool we're in the past oh see he's checking stuff out on the wall like it's neat the score and the way this is shot it's like they're filming a horror movie shouldn't you be working on your time warp calculations mr spock I am. <laughs> I really love how they've developed the relationship between these two. Hold it. Get your hands up. Oh, God. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Beam up immediately. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, gotta take him, too. Shit. Just take the whole base. <laughs> uh, this guy's playing it off great. Uh, don't send Spock first. Yeah. 
<laughs> he hasn't moved. Oh no. Oh my god. He's gonna fight them all off. <laughs> oh! <laughs> ah! He wanted the roll, but he bumped into him. <laughs> oh, oh, crossbody! <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, they're letting him have a field day with this one. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is a spot! Oh no, I had to pull up the gun. Oh my god, that was so exciting. Alright, where's the other one? One of them. Your partner, I saw you looking that way, and I saw somebody move in there. Oh, no, no. I'm pretty sure that guy was in Willy Wonka in one of the goofy uh, ticket segments. Wow, great memory if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they have you, they're keeping your husband captive. What do they want? <laughs> they want your case of Wonka bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's your husband's life or this case of Wonka bars. How long do I have to think about it? <laughs> you got all the way inside here without tripping any alarm. How did you do it? You wouldn't believe me. Is that a uniform of some kind? This little thing? Something I slipped on? <laughs> I love how he's being so coy about it. I am going to lock you up for 200 years. That ought to be just about right. <laughs> you don't trust me, Spock. I do. But only to a certain point. Well, I appreciate the nuanced answer there. <laughs> Hold it. Ah! Nice. <laughs> See what that is, Emma. <laughs> oh! Ah! Don't you find that painful, Captain? Yes, I do. <laughs> they addressed how much he punches people. But how are they gonna get back? <laughs> Spock, come out of there. Spock! You'll go home, Christopher. Do it our way. Uh, Spock is just too good. Like, there's nothing you can do. He's the he's the best. He has solutions to problems you haven't even thought of yet. <laughs> then pull away at full power. The whiplash will propel us into another time warp, and we'll transport you back at a point before any of this happened. What I am worried about, sir, is that we may not have much control when we're thrown forward again. This is like Superman when Superman flies. <laughs> It reverses Earth's rotation to go back in time. So wait, he transported into himself, right? Is that what they did? Like the exact moment it was taken, they put it back? Yeah, I guess. Breaking should begin now. Oh! Enterprise is home. Kirk out. Damn. Abrupt. But perfect. Perfect ending, in my opinion. Really solid episode. It's cool that we had two back-to-back -back that were both so good. Hopefully, you know, that just keeps on going. Um, as far as the time travel stuff, at first I was surprised how much of it was being, like, played for laughs. Uh, you know, like, used more in a comedic sense. But overall, I think I actually like that because, like I said in the middle of the episode, no time travel in media ever makes sense, ever, once you actually start to break it down. They're never going to be able to make it ha make complete sense, and there are things we could talk about in this episode that, you know, prove that. Um, so the fact that they played it mostly for comedy uh, while using it for some serious tension, I think overall was the way to go. I think it worked. Every form of media has different forms of telling how time travel works and the way they explain it in this one I thought was great and intricate. I'm a little shaky on sending back to where they were, the the two people, but uh, like, like, oh, we can't return you. It's like, oh, well, you, you can't get back, blah, 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 blah. And they keep running into more problems and you keep they keep elevating the stakes. It's like, oh, my God, how are they going to fix this? And the, f <laughs> the fight scene was wonderful. Kirk got to go all out. <laughs> it's always nice to play with time and go back to how things looked in the 60s with uh, purple military 
suits, I guess. <laughs> yeah, two things on that. Uh, the first one being kind of similar to how I felt with Miri, although obviously that was like a, another planet that just resembled Earth for whatever reason. Uh, we know the behind-the-scenes reasons of u- reusing the sets, but as far as in-show, same thing here. You go back to Earth as Earth was in the 60s when this show came out, and it still, to me, feels a little bit wasted. Like It feels a little bit like this is the first time that these characters are going to Earth, and it happens to me modern day for when this show released, and we don't really see anything of Earth other than them just in this Air Force base, which is fine, and I understand that's not the point of the episode. But to me, I would love to see an episode where they actually explore Earth, either Earth from the 60s or even a futuristic take of Earth, uh, but actually get to explore that a little bit more. So maybe that happens down the line, or maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Uh, but every time we get into these premises, that's what I'm almost hoping for, and so far it hasn't happened. Not really a flaw with the show, but just more of a personal preference that you know I would be a excited to see yeah uh they're teasing us a little bit you know with uh kirk and sulu like looking throughout the air force base looking at the trophy case you know they're like he's like feeling i think it was like the fire alarm he's like "Ooh, what's this you know so maybe that was credited to the actors you know thinking hey i'm not from this time and it's nice to suspend your disbelief and actually believe they're from the future even though they they're literally from that time period the person who played the the pilot who got beamed up i thought his taking in of everything happening was great I like the guest stars, like the the day players on this show are always, for the most part, fantastic. Like they just they know how to pick them. They're day players. Yeah, rare that you see just like a straight up bad performance, at least thus far in what we've watched. They're they're usually uh you know either just fine and good to great. Um, so I think there were some good ones in this episode as well. Overall, besides that, the story is a bit more simple than I expected, so I don't have much more to say. It was enjoyable. Like you said, very tense at moments and also very exciting. So really liked it. Would definitely be one that I would rewatch uh, overall. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So saying all that, I have to give this, this episode an F. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the punchline for every video. <laughs> yeah, every single one. Um, every one. But yeah, so comment down below if there's anything we didn't talk about or anything that you disagree with. Let us know in the comments. As I said earlier, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't on the road to 2,000 subscribers and join the target audience. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Alex. This is Josh. We are the target audience where content is made for absolutely everybody. But we think it's specifically made for us and hopefully for you as well. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one.